Next, there's the organ of your brain. Your or, the, the brain, the language of the brain are thoughts and the language of the body is emotions. Your brain files away the emotions that you feel based on the neurochemistry that your body is creating at the moment of an event. And it's a file, your body's a filing cabinet, as is your brain. So it files away, it stores the emotions in your body and the thoughts in your brain. And then there's your ego. Your ego is the one that thinks, if I'm looking at the same hand doing the same meditation, paying attention to the lines in my hands and the feelings, it says, I'm not doing this right. Maybe I got this wrong. Maybe I'm the only one who's not going to get, everybody else is going to get this, but no, nope, I'm the only one who's not going to figure this out. Everybody else is smarter than me. Or I'm just, you know what? Maybe I'm just not looking at it right. Maybe my hand's not angled right. Or maybe, maybe I should focus more with my left eye than my right eye. Maybe I should be going back and forth between my left and my right eye. Every single one of those comments that I just mentioned are ego statements that come from our brain because our brain and our ego are partners, okay? Our brain is just a vibrational interpreter of the emotions that are in your body and of the thoughts that your ego sends as well as the memories that are stored in your brain. And then, the, then there's the false you, the shadow, some people call it your shadow side, the false you, the false self, your dark side, if you will, is the one that is not, doesn't say loving thoughts. It's always communicating lack. You're falling short. You're not worthy. You're not doing it right. Maybe you're, maybe you're just not smart enough. Maybe you're never going to get this. Anything that follows that kind of vibe that you're, everybody else is going to get it, but not you. You're not smart enough. You're not tall enough. You're not thin enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not whatever. It's, it's always expressing or implying, creating doubt, or that you are going to fall short, that you're not going to be enough, that you're not good enough, yada, yada, yada. You get the picture, I think, right now. Once you recognize that all those thoughts are not loving things to say to somebody else, let alone to say to yourself, and you recognize, oh, wait a minute, my conscious awareness, my conscious awareness doesn't think that. That's my ego and my brain that are talking. My brain is allowing my ego to surface because it thinks that it's the master because you have allowed it to be the master for, some people have allowed it for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, 60 years. It depends how old you are. I don't know you specifically who are looking at me through this video at this very moment in time. I don't know how old you are. It doesn't matter. You could be 80. So if you've been, it's possible that you've been doing this for, if you're 80, you've probably been doing this for like 84, 85, 86 years, depending on how soon you got out of the theta state as a child. Usually children are in theta state from birth until they're about five, six, maybe even seven years old. Once in a blue while, you'll have a kid that'll be nine years old and they're still in theta state. But most kids get out of theta state between six and eight years of age. And that's when the ego starts to come in. And it's as a direct result of the conditioning from whoever it is who's your caretakers, teachers, society, and so forth.